Hi class, we're going to be looking at a book called Henry's Freedom Box today, and we're going to be inferring and questioning to understand the historical context. So this is Henry's Freedom Box, a true story from the Underground Railroad by Ellen Levine. Henry Brown wasn't sure how old he was. Henry was a slave, and slaves weren't allowed to know their birthdays. We can make an inference here looking at this picture. He looks small, his face is childish. Henry's probably maybe seven or eight, um, and we can see that slavery affected a lot of people of, like, um, younger ages as well as older. Henry and his brothers and sisters worked in the big house where his master lived. Henry's master had been good to Henry and his family. But Henry's mother knew things could change. Do you see those leaves blowing in the wind? They're torn off from the trees like slave children are torn from their families. So we can see that even though their situation appears to be good, they're sad, it's dark, they're turned away, and um, she's worried about the threat of their family being torn apart. One morning, the master called for Henry and his mother. They climbed the wide staircase. The master lay in bed with his head above the quilt. He was ill and beckoned for them to come closer. Some slaves were freed by their owners. Henry's heart beat fast. Maybe the master would set him free. But he said, you're a good worker, Henry, and giving you to my son. You must obey him and never tell a lie. Henry nodded but didn't say thank you. It would have been a lie. So here we see Henry's good character. He works hard. He doesn't lie. Later that day, Henry watched a bird soar high above the trees. Free bird, happy bird, Henry thought. Henry said goodbye to his family and looked across the field. The leaves swirled in the wind. We see that metaphor of leaves being torn off the trees and Henry being torn from his family. Henry worked in his new master's factory and was good at his job. Do not tear that tobacco leaf, the boss yelled at the new boy. He poked the boy with his stick. If you made a mistake, the boss would beat you. We see other slaves here, and they all look young, and we can make an inference that this affected a lot of people and question why were so many people affected by this? Why did they use such young labor? Henry was lost. One day he met Nancy, who was shopping for her mistress. mistress. They walked and talked and agreed to meet again. Henry felt like singing, but slaves didn't dare sing in the street. Instead, he hummed all the way home. We see this white man glaring at them, and we wonder why can't he sing? And is it good enough to just be happy, or should he be able to express himself, too? Months later, Henry asked Nancy to be his wife. When both their masters agreed, Henry and Nancy were married. Soon there was a little baby and another and another. Henry knew they were very lucky to live together. But Nancy was worried. Her master had lost a great deal of money and was afraid he would sell their children. Henry sat very still. Henry worked hard all morning. He tried to forget what Nancy said. So we see here they're in a situation where they're lucky, they get to live together, but there's still that fear in the back of their minds that their family will be separated. His friend James came into the factory. He whispered to Henry, your wife and children were just sold at the slave market. No, cried Henry. Henry couldn't move. He couldn't think. He couldn't work. Twist that tobacco, the boss poked Henry. Henry twisted tobacco leaves. His heart twisted in his chest. At lunchtime, Henry rushed to the center of town. A large group of slaves was tied together. The owner shouted at them. Henry looked at his family. Father, father! Henry watched his children disappear down the road. Where was Nancy? He saw her at the same moment she saw him. Then he wiped away his tears, and Nancy, too, was gone. And in this picture, you see... Um, white men positioned above the black men. They're on horses. Why were they positioned this way? Um, and you can see that it reflects society, but why in society were they positioned like this? And how could these injustices be solved? Henry no longer sang. He couldn't hum. He went to work, and at night he ate supper and went to bed. Henry tried to think of happy times, but all he could see were carts carrying away everyone he loved. He knew he would never see his family again. Many weeks passed. One morning, Henry heard singing. A little bird flew out of a tree in the open sky, and Henry thought about being free. How? As he lifted a crate, he knew the answer. He asked James and Dr. Smith to help him. Dr. Smith was a white man who thought slavery was wrong. They met early the next day in an empty warehouse. Henry arrived with a box. I'll mail myself to a place where there are no slaves, he said. Henry stared at the box, then at James. What if you cough and someone hears you? I will stay still and hope, Henry said. So here we see a white man who's using his position of power to help. How are other ways that um, people in positions of power could help? How about now? Um, who's in power now? Who has a privileged position? And how can they help those who aren't privileged? You see them on the same level having a conversation. It's very different than the white men we saw on the horses. Dr. Smith wrote on the box to William H. Johnson, Arch Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Henry would be delivered to friends there. He printed on the crate, this side up with care. 
Henry needed an excuse to stay home, or the work boss would think he'd run off. James pointed to Henry's sore finger, but it wasn't bad enough. He opened a bottle of oil of vitriol. No, cried James. Henry poured it on his hand, burning his skin to the bone. Now the boss would have to let him stay home. Dr. Smith bandaged Henry's hand they arranged to meet the next morning at 4 o'clock. We see the desperateness of the situation here. The sun was not up yet when Henry climbed into the box. Ready, he said. The lid was nailed down and drove to the, they drove to the station. The railway clerk tipped the box over and nailed the paper. Be careful. He didn't listen. Hours passed. Henry was lifted up, thrown down. He heard waves. This must be the steamboat. The ship rode smoothly, but Henry was upside down. Blood rushed to his head. His face was hot. He thought his head would burst. He was afraid to move. Someone might hear him. I love this sentence. The ship rode smoothly, but Henry was still upside down. And I think that it describes the whole historical context. Even when things seem to be going well, or like, well, for being a slave, they have a good master, they're allowed to live together, they're still upside down. They're still fundamentally positioned in a way that would make their situation um, unjust and uncomfortable and just not right. I'm tired of standing, someone said. Why don't we move that box? Henry held his breath. Could they be talking about his box? Henry was pushed. The box scraped the deck. Now he was on his right, now his left. Suddenly, right side up. What do you think is in here, said the first man. Mail, I guess, said the other. I'm mail, thought Henry, but not the kind they imagined. So here we see them making an inference, and it's not totally correct. Henry was carried off the steamboat and placed in a railroad car, this time head up. He fell asleep to the rattling song of train wheels. He awoke to loud knocking. Henry, are you all right in there? All right, he answered. The cover was pried open. Henry stretched and stood up. Four men smiled at him. Welcome to Philadelphia. So we see here a much more hopeful image. Lots of, we see white and black men together, smiling, and hope for a better life for Henry, and by extension, for all of the slaves. And we can um, ask questions. What other ways did the Underground Railroad work? Um, certainly they weren't all shipped in boxes or else um, people would have caught on, but in what ways um, did people continue to pursue freedom? And these are all things to consider as we move forward studying this time in history and um, slavery and abolitionists and consider how that connects to important issues of racism and freedom today. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in class.